Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Shaving with Wookies. I am your favorite Dungeon Master, DM Andy, and today I've gone out to the hardware store to get everything I need to build industrial terrain for our tabletop games. That's right, I went around people just for you. If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been building an industrial landscape for one page rules and 40k. So, I need some industrial pipelines, uh, some industrial pallet crates, and some kind of coaxium crystals to bring my game together and give these guys something to fight for. While I was out amongst the holiday crowds, I bought the smallest PVC piping and the smallest fittings I could find, and I just cut that down to what I thought would look good on the table. So I made these about 12 to 15 inches long, but I didn't really do a whole lot of measuring. I just started cutting them apart and gluing them together. So. If you notice, I'm using this PVC cutter, but you don't have to have one of these. You can cut PVC with just about anything. It's a really, really soft plastic. Uh, I used my model snips and I cleaned up the fittings. They had little pieces sticking out. Then I sanded each of them down and then I just pushed everything together. The only thing I had to pay attention to was I want these to look like the pipes are coming out of the ground. So I just made sure everything was level across my mat. Then I took it outside and I base coated it flat black. And once that was coated and dried, I took it back to the beats lab and I got out a metallic silver paint. I took a kitchen sponge and I just stippled on to the high side of this piping. Uh, I went down the sides and the top, but I left the underside alone. One of my favorite things about these pipelines is they are so easy. You can crank out an entire six foot by four foot tables worth of scatter terrain in like two hours. These are really, really easy guys. And if you just spend a little time on them, they actually look really, really cool too. Um, I went over the top side and shined it up really, really good so that one side would have really, really, really high metal highlights and the other side was really, 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 really dark. And then I'm just gonna get out some metallic copper and I'm gonna take a tiny, tiny piece of sponge and I'm just gonna put spots all over the piping in different places. This step really helps break up all that silver and make it look more used or grim dark. And once you have that like you like it, set it aside and let it dry. And we're gonna move on to some of the palettes I'm gonna create for this futuristic wargaming scatter terrain. I'm gonna take some Wylock stock or chipboard and I'm gonna cut me down a strip about two millimeters wide. Um, and I'm gonna use that for the I-beam feet of my uh, futuristic palettes. Um, then I'm gonna cut down another piece uh, this was about two inches thick. Look at me jumping back and forth with measuring types. Um, just use a really, really sharp knife. If you can see there, it took me a while to get through because I was using an older knife. But uh, then I'm just going to cut down some of that two millimeter strip and I'm going to glue them standing up on the pallet. This is the underneath side of the pallet. So these are the feet. And like I said, I'm going to make it like an I-beam where you've got the horizontal piece with the perpendicular piece and that's probably wrong just use some PVA glue uh, this uh, medium chipboard it really really sucks up this PVA glue well so it dries faster than most things when you're doing it this way um, just try not to get too messy um, you're not gonna see a lot of this it is underneath but uh, stand those up just like that and let them dry uh, come back after they're dry and put the second piece of the foot on, the actual foot of this I-beam. Um, cut them down. They don't have to be perfect. Drizzle PBA glue across the top of it and then stack that on there. All right. Uh, once you've got that one on there, spin it around and do the same thing to the other side. Um, just take your time with this. Um, it's not real hard to get these to stand up and these pieces to the glue together like this. Um, the PBA glue is just, it's got just enough viscosity to l let those fibers grab and it works pretty well. The one thing you got to watch out for that I found is that they'll warp. 
PBA glue will warp this stuff. So once I got everything put together and I put these small top pieces on that I'm about to make right here with the paper cutter, I weighted them down with like acrylic glue bottles and the PBA glue bottles. Uh, and I just left them that way to dry once I had this second piece on right here. If you notice, I'm cutting the corners off. Um, that's just to give it a little bit more of a futuristic look. Um, and to make sure this stuck the way I wanted it to, I, uh, I took a piece of sandpaper and I, I scored off some of that plastic printed advertisement that's on the food card stock. Uh, this is the only piece I made the food card stock out of. And then, of course, I went on to my favorite Battle Brother Blue and I coated these entire things in just a thick layer of blue paint. You may have to touch these up in a few spots after that first layer dries. Um, again, this, this chipboard really, really drinks up the liquid in your glues and paints. So, all right. See this little woodsy right here? Everybody has these woodsies. Everybody buys these woodsies. Like, uh, they're used for all kinds of different things. But what I did is I glued two of them together. And then I glued it on the top and bottom of it. I glued just little round miniature bases. And I made a futuristic barrel out of them. I did a lot of the painting separate. If you notice, I've already painted the palette, but I haven't painted any of the accoutrements that I'm going to stack on there. Uh, so that's to keep everything from getting too messy. I took the barrels outside and I base coated them flat black. And then I took silver paint and I just sponged on paint. Um, makes it look really, really, really cool. These turned out really, really good. I really like these barrels. I'm going to make a bunch more of these, but... Uh, just hit the edges more than everything else and try not to go overboard with your paint. These little tubes and these little plastic crystals, I wanted to make some kind of energy cell, like, like the little thing Solo's carrying around with the coaxium in it at the end of the movie when he's gambling. Um, I, uh, I took those little plastic tubes and those little crystals and I dropped them down in there. And then I took these inserts out of these out of dairy containers some of them have this little ring you pull. Well, I pulled those out. I cut the rings off and I just base coated those flat black and then silver paint. And then I glued them on the top of these, these red cylinders with, with the crystal inside of it. And that's pretty much all I did. Uh, I did cut down this Nerf arrow because I wanted the crystals to stand up a little bit inside. And I didn't want to have to do a lot of work to get that done. I've seen a lot of people do things like add LEDs and really, really get meticulous with how they make the crystal float inside of them. But I'm just using this to play Warhammer with miniatures. I really just want them on the table to protect my guys. So... Uh, I went ahead and glued those little pieces of Nerf on there, and then I just hot glued the bottom of these little chambers and stuck them on there to where it would lift that crystal up just a little bit. And there you have it, a futuristic scatter terrain for your Warhammer 40K, your RPG games, one played rules, just whatever you're into. I went ahead and spun these on my tabletop, and thank you guys for hanging out and watching the video. I, uh... I've got almost 300 subscribers, and it is the coolest feeling to think the more I do this, the more people are watching. So, as always, I am your favorite Dungeon Master DM Andy saying please like, subscribe, and tell all your friends how cool I am.